In the video today, we're going to explain what happened in the past 24 hours, the issues and things that you need to keep your eye on to profit from forward price momentum. We'll talk about trading and investing and how important it is to do both, especially as the bull market is getting into full swing. We'll talk about Bitcoin key levels and how to get your mindset set up for the bull run. And if you hang to the end, I've got some very special tips for you. Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, a very warm welcome and welcome back CTKS family. Here you'll learn how to become fearless in financial markets to assist you to become more of a financial and emotional blessing to yourself and those you love. If you like the content, please subscribe to the channel and smash that like button. All indicators that I use in the daily videos come from the service at ctksmethod.org. Let's run the numbers. The main markets in the past trading session. We saw a retracement in the VIX, but the VIX is still positive. We also saw the yields have been soaring and just a minor retracement. The DXY has been soaring and also just a minor retracement. Gold is under pressure. Bonds are under pressure. We had a retracement, but due to this slight retracement in the yields and the DXY as well as the VIX, we saw some positive price action inside the major indices. One really good thing to look at are the futures. When you look at the futures, you get a really good indication as to where things could be going. We saw with the inflation data getting released, we had a big sell off in the yields. Bitcoin, however, has managed to do well because it's had so many inflows. Currently $62 billion worth of inflows. I'll explain why we're seeing this pattern play out in the major indice futures at the current time. Also, why the futures look this way. They've come down fairly significantly and just retraced. But you can see it's not a total retracement. A total retracement would be up here. We're down here just at the current time. This is something to bear in mind. We're not out of the woods yet. We've just seen a near 50% retracement. A major indice to keep your eyes on are the S&P 500 index and charts. When we put on the structural levels, we can see some amazing things. We can see that we were getting into structural resistance as we approached this 5040 mark. We sold off because of the hotter than anticipated inflation data. We managed to get up, consolidate around this 4970 mark, and we're still coming up. There is a positive fresh air gap, which means that we could come back up and do a full retracement. Just keep your eyes on these structural levels. Around that 4970 is really important and 4933. If we start to get movements below 4970, that puts in play the 4933 mark. Currently in play is the 5040 mark. There's a couple of factors that we need to pay close attention to. One thing that I really like to look at is the inverted put call ratio. Why is that? Because when we look at the S&P 500, if we're looking at the inverted put and call ratio against the S&P 500, it gives a really good directional bias. And what do we see right now? In the past trading session, we got a bit of a leg up here, but it's nowhere near a full retracement. People are feeling really bearish inside the market. That doesn't mean it can't recover and just keep on going. But what it does mean, if we get a bit of a push back, we would expect the S&P 500 and also Bitcoin to retrace eventually. This just creates an incredible buying opportunity. And one thing that you want to be very aware of is to pump up your investment bag as we get these retracements. A lot of people, when they see negative price momentum, they're out of the market. They say, oh, no, I can't make a loss. Somebody said I can't make a loss. Yet dollar cost averaging is buying on the way down if you're doing it correctly. 
To get this idea in your mind, I always say everybody wants to buy the bottom. They want to buy right there, but only the elite are inside the market when that happens. And the issue is you don't need to pin the exact bottom. Many people ask, oh, have I missed the move? Is it too late? Let's go back in time. Let's look at this move in the S&P 500. People would have said around sort of just before the end or before the start of August, have I missed the move? Well, no, you didn't miss the move. Look at this. It came back to here. That doesn't mean you place yourself outside the market because no matter what you're doing, there's always opportunities inside every market. And it really depends on how you're doing your allocations between your investments and your trades. I would like to thank Art for his very generous comment in sharing his experience inside financial markets. He says, I like to talk about investing versus trading bags in terms of size or percentage. This is a really important thing you should have when you enter the bull market, a trading account and an investing account. The trading account is where you time the markets. Investing is where you accumulate on those red days and you're always going to get them. Art goes on to say, my portfolio changes based on the current market. Right now, I'm heavily invested to take advantage of the exponential growth in a bull market. But I'm constantly trading with my bags. I'm like a very active investor. Nothing is sacred. I'll take the profits after a nice rally on one project, but letting most of it run. This is a very important concept that Art is talking about here. Letting your winners run can be very challenging. One thing that we know, everything is moving between structural levels, but letting your winners run is a key thing. That's why you should have an investment portfolio. And that goes on to say, and then accumulate a good project whose wave is at the bottom. This concept of a good project is really important as well. On your list of things to get into or your wish list for your huddle bag, you should identify good projects. Everything in the market is moving in a wave. Some are going up and some are going down. Personally, I love to buy on double digit red days, but they're going to get fewer and fewer between when we get into the bull market run. So it's something to keep in mind. So, Art says, it might not be for everyone, but it's working fantastically for me. And of course, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. One thing that we really need to keep our eye on are the US 2 year, the US 10 year, the VIX, the DXY. They're going to give us a lot of understanding as to where things are going. And silver and gold are very yield and DXY sensitive. When we pop on the indicator from the service, what do we notice? We can see as the inflation data came out, we just went through so many structural levels of support, but we did retest them. If we can't get through, where are we going? We're going to the next one down. And that's exactly what happened with silver. If you cannot maintain a level, it means that we're going down. But always keep in mind, price is always moving in a wave. It's not just a straight line down. These safety nets are for that exact purpose. When you're inside the market, you can see price is always moving all over the place. It's in a wave function. And when it gets above a certain structural level, it's seeking to head to the next one. When these structural levels get really strong, as the structural level is around that 2237 mark, it takes a bit of getting across that to go up to the next one. So just bear in mind, the yields are currently weakening, but we know with that they haven't weakened that much. We really need to have a look into them, especially their structural levels. When we look at the US 10 year yield, we can see from a structural perspective that it was getting bounded. But when the inflation data came out, it really spiked, came back, retested, 
resumed up. But this big area of structural resistance was the reason that it fell down. And this falling down here, especially not obeying this structural level, means that the US 10 year yield was quite weak. And we can see it beginning to sell down again. This is really good for the markets. As this comes down, the US 10 year yield comes down, it means the markets go up. But just bear in mind, what we're seeing here is not much of a pullback in overall terms. This is something that's important to understand. If this was a full retracement, that would just be a blip, but it's not. We can see that there's a still a degree of positive momentum. This means we should be cautious, we should be understanding that the US 10 year is just digesting a monumental gain. When this came up so fast, it just had to digest. We see it all the time inside crypto. It also applies to the stock market. I would also like to thank Stephen Mary Allen. SME has just been crushing it in the bear market and also crushing it in the bull market. Steve says, I am stacking Bitcoin and Ethereum, always buying on capitulations at lower SL levels for the bull run. I trade the alts and the miners and now Bitcoin ETFs for 4 to 15% trades. Well done, SME. You are awesome, my friends. When looking at the US two year yield, we can see an absolute monster run and a retracement. This is really not that much of a retracement. People are getting really excited. The markets are going to rally. I would suggest not so fast. We have a lot of positive momentum here on the yields, and that is not good for the economic system. Remember, as the yields come up, it breaks the banking system. So look for pressure, a lot of negative pressure on the regional banks. The US government is also in massive debt, as are governments around the world. If the yields go up for them, it means that they're all in trouble. Their interest payments as a percentage of what they take in will be more and more and more. This is not a good thing. Okay, back to the US two year. So you can think of the US two and the US 10 moving together to influence the DXY. What are we seeing right now? We saw that the US two year just crashed through these structural resistance levels. But where did it end up? It ended up just here. So think about that. We retraced all of that move right up to there and down to there. A lot of people, if they were buying the US two year yield, would say, oh, have, am I too late? Can I get in? Yes, you can get in. Absolutely. Because markets are always moving in a wave. Price is going up and down, up and down all the time. The question is, where is price going up and down from? It's going up from a structural support area into a structural resistance. If it can't convert that into structural support, it's going back to the one below. Please keep these factors in mind. When it comes to structure, there are multiple support and multiple resistance levels that occur inside market structure. Market structure is a lot like geological structure. To reveal market structure, we need to mark up all of price history. Now, when we look at this, this is the geological structure of the DXY. The DXY has been marked up for in excess of 20,000 days. What is happening here? We can see that this structural level at the 104 was a very strong support level. And with the CPI data coming out, the inflation data, we blasted through these two structural levels, but came into all this overhead structure. You can see just how much overhead structures there inside the DXY. This is a really good thing because if it was light structure, it would just keep on blasting through it. Instead, with so much structure up here, the DXY has had a really tough time getting through it. And we can see this structural level and this structural level. The DXY came into here, but the DXY has been just a little bit lower than that, which is indicating a lot of sell pressure on the DXY. It's also been coming down. 
Now, the key is when we look at this overall move from here and the retracement back, it's not much of a retracement. It's a minor retracement. This is important from this perspective when we see these SL levels getting breached and these areas of shading are called SCs or Stanfield zones. When we see it coming up to such a big degree of overhead resistance, we would naturally expect it to back off. One thing to keep on your radar, if the DXY enters this 104.8857 mark and exceeds 105, 0656. That is going to be very problematic for the markets. We would expect a lot of negative retracement. On the other side, if the DXY breaks down into this 104.4284, this 104.3309, and just keeps on going down below that 104.3309 level, that will be fantastic for the markets. In all likelihood, the US 2-year, the US 10-year will be decaying, the VIX will be decaying, and we'll see a broad-based rally across the markets. Remember, this is a very volatile time, and the DXY has not retraced significantly at all. It's showing tremendous strength. People who are doing the cheat sheet, make sure that you look more broadly than what I've just covered because it's really important. When we look into the crypto market, now you have a very good understanding of what's been happening. We can see that in Bitcoin, as the yields decay, the dollar decay, the US 2 year, the US 10 year, and the VIX backed off, we saw inflows into the crypto market. We know that no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. So, as Ethereum, what happened to Ethereum? As Bitcoin was coming up, Ethereum said, hey, wait for me, I'm coming too. What about BNB? Yep, it jumped on board. What about Solana? Yes siree. XRP jumping on board with Bitcoin. ADA jumping on board as well. AVAX moving in alignment with Bitcoin's gravity. But what about Chainlink? Chainlink says, oh, I'm not feeling that good. I'm not feeling that crash hot at the moment. Unfortunately, Chainlink was doing not so well and Doge has woofed in its place. And you can see Doge has been going for it and it booted Link out of the top eight. Our focus is on Bitcoin. We need to understand how the US 2 year, the US 10 year yields are impacting Bitcoin at the current time. And also the DXY. When we saw the US 10, the US 2 and the DXY spike to the up direction, it put so much negative price momentum on Bitcoin that it caused it to fall down to around that $48,000 mark. Since then, because the US 2, the US 10 and the DXY have been retracing, we've seen upward positive momentum inside Bitcoin. Also, we've seen a huge number of flows into total crypto market cap, $60 billion worth. Currently, it's $68 billion. There's a lot of inflows into crypto that are supporting this upward momentum at the current time. I've been talking about having an investment portfolio and a trading portfolio. If you have both, what you'll find is that you can invest for the long term, potentially for the top of the bull run, which should occur maybe around mid 2025, maybe a little bit earlier. But the idea is that you can dollar cost average in as price is coming down. And we know those percentages are very valuable to get in here. You don't want to keep on buying at the top and see these retracements occurring. You want to try and get into price in the other way. That means you may have to be patient. For example, as Bitcoin's price just exploded upwards, very few people would have said, oh, it's going to come back to this level when it was exploding, exploding up to there. Just keep this in mind. What could occur on this particular price action? Well, it's very natural to see reactions to the downside. And we know it all depends on structure. So let's turn on the structural levels. What we can see currently is that Bitcoin was playing around with all of this overhead structural resistance around that 50,500 mark. The really important structural resistance was around 50,900, which it's overtaken. 
and you can see there's a lot of positive momentum. Now, what happens if the US 2, the US 10-year yield spike, the DXY spikes and the VIX spikes? Expect a movement down, no matter what is flowing into the crypto market, as we saw earlier. You want to ride those retracements. And like Art and others have said in the comments from yesterday's video, it's important to invest and it's important to trade, especially if you're inside the bull run. And we are gearing up in a big way. The probability of an ease in the federal funds rate of 25 basis points is currently 10.5%. That's up a little from yesterday's 9%. This means that the yields are under negative price momentum and the DXY as well. If you see the yields dropping below 10.5% or the probability of a rate easing dropping below this, say it's going to 5%, you would expect the yields to jump up on that news as well as the DXY. But if you see this percentage going to 20%, 30%, 40% or something like that, that means that the DXY and the yields will absolutely crater. The net result is that the markets will rally. The markets will rally if this easing percentage comes up and the markets will decrease if this easing percentage goes down. Another thing to keep in mind, just watch the short and the long liquidations. As soon as the longs just feel just, yeah, the price is going to go up. There's no problem with this. They're going to get hit just as the shorts anticipated that the market would come down. What we've seen right now and recently is the shorts have been under a lot of negative price momentum. They've been liquidated and they need to cover so they need to buy and this is what forces the price up. But they always take it in turns. The longs will have their chance to get liquidated as well. The shorts are being liquidated currently but it won't stay that way. Another thing to keep in mind, we're at, at a structural resistance level just currently. We're backing off from that just at the current time with total crypto market cap. LGRC1 had a wonderful comment to share with you. He said, I am so happy to be here through this amazing time. We were like Spartans in the bear market. We never retreated and never surrendered. That's us. That's the CTKS family. We are strong. Always ready to pick up the bargains. With your help, Ken and Kate, we became so much better. I would like to mark up this time that you were there with us as we move step by step to another sunshine. The sun is definitely coming out. This is the time where we can not only trade but also invest. And that concept of the sunshine coming out is critically important. LG RC1 also said we were like Spartans in the bear market, which is absolutely true. What a community we are. Kate and I are so very grateful that you're spending this time together with us. The key to your success is to know where the structural levels are, especially across the tier one charts. The tier one charts are the engine of financial markets globally. We need to pay a lot of attention to these 10. They're very, very important. The tier two can give us a confirmation either way on the tier ones and the tier three are very crypto specific and Forex specific. Knowing your structural levels is incredibly important. And if you want to gain the structural levels that I use inside the indicators, you can pop across to ctksmethod.org. Having been in side financial markets for nearly four decades, I remember when I was in the panic zone and the blame zone, zone one and zone two. I was like a light switch. I would just go into opportunities and come out of opportunities based on what was said outside. I didn't stack probabilities. I didn't know the rules of the market. And this is despite doing a finance degree. What they teach in university and what the market teaches you are two completely different things. What I found was that I didn't even know where the target was. I felt like I was blindfolded. I would typically fire, ready, then aim. And I didn't know what I was firing at. And that may sound surprising for a finance graduate, but it's not. 
The markets are so complex, it takes a lot of time to understand what's going on. What I want to help you with is to understand that certainty will create terror. There's no degree, no shortage of people out there that will say, I certainly know what's going on. We can only know from a probabilistic stance what's going on. The markets are incredibly complex. When you're looking at one chart, you're not just looking at one chart, you're looking at so many different ones. You're looking at all the tier one, tier two and tier three charts. So it's important when you just focus on one chart to understand you're not looking at one chart. Don't go all in or all out. Don't be like a light switch, be more like a dimmer. Just come out at strategic levels and more importantly, go in at strategic levels. When you start to get into zone three and zone four, what you discover is you're just focusing on the market's rules. You're going to hit that bullseye more often than not, but you won't hit it every time and you don't need to do so. You'll also find that inside zone three, you're going to make money, but making money and keeping money are two different things. There's another level that you need to go to, which is called positive excellence. Unfortunately, a lot of people are not interested in positive excellence. Maybe it's because that they just want to make money first, but they don't understand making money and keeping money are two very, very different things. The key Number one is to stop losing money. Now, how do you stop losing money? It's basically a mind game. If you look for certainty, you will be terrorized because there is no certainty inside financial markets. What you will see is price going up, price retracing, price going up, price retracing, price going up. Where's the certainty in that? You could have bought there and seen the price going down and sold there before it went up again and then you bought there and then it comes down and then you sell. This is what happens inside zone one and zone two. There's just panic and blame all over the place because these are low level of knowledge areas. What you want to do is get out of scarcity thinking, get out of certainty thinking, get into probability thinking and rule based thinking. The only way that you can do that is through learning. You also need patience because as things are coming up, you will feel FOMO, but as things are coming down, you should be buying and that requires patience. If you would like to see more positive excellence content on the channel, please let me know by dropping the word positive excellence in the comments. We need to remember the application of rule 885. Profits come from uncertainty. When you're certain about something, that's not a time to be profitable. Profits always come from uncertainty. Uncertainty is the opposite of certainty. It's also vitally important to have the best habits that you can create. Better habits create a better life. It's important to do your daily positive affirmations. You need to know that the universe wants you to succeed. Therefore, you don't need to be on guard against other people or against anything. You can show kindness, integrity and gratitude. It's important to show integrity because if we don't, it'll come back to haunt us. You should know that opportunities and life reset daily. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday. Today is a completely new day. Also understand that you are totally worthy of success and you don't need to be in a sprint. You can go slow to go fast. It's important to start small and scale and always remember that the life pullbacks give you the strength for the next life rally. Getting a life pullback isn't a problem. It's life saying, hey, go in this other direction and you're getting set up for your next life rally. It's vitally important to be dedicated and committed. You'll find that you either win or you learn. If you blame, you'll lose, lose the lesson as well as the money that you put into the market. This is why you say, I need to learn or I win. If you're not winning, you should be just learning. Please don't blame because when you blame, you disempower yourself and you will find that the market will mercilessly give you the same lesson time and time again until you learn it. 
make sure that you always solve your problems with positive excellence. Because you've hung around to the end, I'm going to give you something really special. This particular blue chart is the US two-year yield. You can note that the junk bonds chart it goes in the opposite direction to how the yields typically move. Now, what is happening with junk bonds now? You can see it's fairly weak. It's just retraced marginally. This is not good for the markets. Let's just pop the indicator on from the service for junk bonds. And here we're marking up 5,800 plus days. We can see that as junk bonds has been coming down, it's showing a big degree of weakness. We have overhead structural resistance levels here. We must watch this 2430 mark. That's incredibly important for junk bonds to get above this to go for it. If we see junk bonds improving in value like this, that is incredibly good for the markets. But if we see junk bonds just dipping below that 94 level, that signifies a weakness inside the markets and a strength inside yields. Please look at junk bonds. This is a bit of a hidden secret, but junk bonds gives you an enormous edge inside the markets. I would also suggest keep looking at the futures. You want the futures to keep on coming up. That's important because if they start to come down, it means that the yields and the DXY are starting to spike. Just bear these factors and cross correlations in mind. A lot of people say, oh, Bitcoin doesn't care. It doesn't care about the market. If that was true, when the yields went nuts, Bitcoin would be unaffected. We saw it was affected. And we already know Bitcoin cannot escape the stock market's gravity. So if the stock market is tanking down, you can be assured Bitcoin is hanging out with it, joining it for the party. The way to approach each day, and this is a good way to think about things, is just keep on looking at the intercorrelations and interdependencies. What you will see is so much synergy. It will be like Neo looking at the matrix and seeing everything, all the code playing out. You'll see the same thing yourself. But just be aware that if markets come down, expect negative price momentum inside Bitcoin and of course crypto. Bitcoin is the slowest mover. If you're in the alts, you're in the alts because they move really, really fast, but they can sell off far more. So it's better to be early than to be late. And just remember your investing bag and your trading bag. When price comes down, that's not a reason to get out of the market. That's the reason to get into the market at better prices. Your secret to X-ray vision is understanding the structure of the tier one, tier two, and tier threes. You must figure out where the structural levels are because price is always moving structural level to structural level. And if you want to get 30 trading view indicators, just pop across to ctksmethod.org. They have all of these structural levels and there are some more, such as micro strategy, the pound dollar, as well as the Aussie dollar and AVAX. Have a great day or night ahead, my friends, and Kate and I look forward to catching up with you again in the next video. Bye for now.